to the entire world. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, our Savior, our healer. We come to you by way of the mercy and power and endowment of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father, for everything that we have in this life, Father, but there are things in this world, Father, that we would much rather not deal with, Father. And we know everything that is here, that we see and that we cannot see, Father, was created by you. But still, there are things that you have created, Father, that we would much rather not deal with, like anxiety, depression, anger, situations that cause travail, Father, situations that cause problems in our lives, Father. We ask that you would eradicate those problems in those situations and circumstances, God, because you created them all. You understand them all, and we know that you have given it to us so that we may in turn give it right back to you, God, and we give you all of our woes. We give you all of our lamentations. We give you all of our travail. We give you all of the excursions that we would rather not journey on, Father. Because they lead down a path of temptation. They lead down a path of addiction. They lead down a path of negative thinking. We give all that back to you, God, and we receive the living word from you, God. We receive the positivity that you provide. We receive the ripple effect of the Holy Spirit that moved across the waters, God. And we thank you for the choice, the free will that you have given us, and the understanding and the knowledge that we may in turn give these things right back to you, God. For these and many other prayers and blessings that we ask for and will continue to ask for and pray for and give you praise for, God. We do this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ the Nazarene, by way of the grace and the mercy of the power of the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, God. Amen, amen, and amen. Every day, every day is a day that we can get up and we can acknowledge God for what God has given us and what God has done in our personal lives. We understand that there are ebbs and flows, ups and downs, and that we might not get what we want to get accomplished done within that day. There are situations that we don't expect that just hit us like a linebacker on a blitz. They just hit us like an unexpected bill, yet, but there is God. So when we go through situations that cause us to be angry, no matter what that situation is in your life, give it back to God. Don't hold on to the anger. Don't hold on to that anger because that anger will do nothing for you. It will not produce any fruit for you. You will be laying dormant and your mind will become idle. Because all you would think about is that anger, how to hold on to that anger. But if you would let it go and give it to God, you would be much better. Because there are situations to where you do every single thing that you can in your life. You do all things that you know how to do and you don't get the results that you need. And it can be frustrating. It can make you just want to sit down and curl up and cry. It can be taxing on your life. It can be taxing on your own health because we don't give it back to God. It could be a job that we truly desire or we could have this particular job, but we seek advancement in this job and we know that we've done everything in our power to receive that advancement. We've completed all the assignments. We've done all of the continuing education courses that maybe this newer position for advancement does require. But yet we still have not received what we know is our just due. So because we haven't received what we know is our just due because we're doing everything that God asks us to do, we get frustrated, we get mad, we get confused. And when we get frustrated as human beings, when we get mad or confused as human beings, that causes us to not make rational choices. It causes us sometimes to dig in deeper. It causes us sometimes to go down that rabbit hole, so to speak, instead of stopping and 
thinking about it and giving it to God. Because when we don't get what we need, sometimes we tend to press that issue. We tend to force that issue. We tend to try to negotiate our way to receive the position or whatever it is that we desire in our life. But instead of forcing it, we should just give it to God and have a little bit of patience. We should maybe be studying a little bit harder because there are a lot of things that you will go through in your life that you feel like you shouldn't have to go through. Again, I can only use my own personal situations and my own circumstances. My son was in that hospital for 57 days and no one wants to be there. I wanted my son out of that hospital every single day he was there. I did not want my son to have to go to the hospital, but God saw fit for it to happen. Now, that is very frustrating. That is very challenging and that is very taxing, this situation. Yet we still have to work. My wife has to work. I have to work. We still must survive. We still must do the same things that you are doing. And that's hard to do those things when you have a situation in your life that is truly out of your control. And that's what God would do. How will you handle that situation that is smack dead in the middle of your life that you can do nothing about? You can't go around it. You can't go above it. You can't go below it. And you cannot obliterate it. It is there. Not like a mountain. It is there permanently until God removes it. Bigger than a mountain this is what you go through sometimes. But this is why God says we can move mountains. Mountains are not just a physical thing. Mountains can be used as a metaphor. But sometimes it takes patience. Sometimes you must go around the mountain. Sometimes you must walk around it. Walk in a circle and watch those walls fall down just how the walls at Jericho fell, the walls that are up in your life shall fall as long as you give it to God and you allow God to use you as that vessel. If you allow God to use you to eradicate the problems in your life, then you are doing something because you are not eradicating the problems. You are allowing God to use you to eradicate the problems in your life. Now, that can seem kind of confusing because you are the one doing it. No, you're not. As long as we remember the root, the root stock in which we have come from, which is the image and in the likeness of God, if we remember that, then we know for sure that God shall remove anything because we are that vessel. So we have to understand that we are that vessel. We are that mountain. We are that pillar. We are all things. So the situation and the problem and the circumstance that you're going through sometimes is your own self. It could be your lack of patience. It could be how quickly you get agitated. It could be how fast you allow your blood pressure to flow up. It could be how quickly you allow negative creative thinking to fill your mind. It could be you allowing anger to incapacitate you to think in a clear and a concise fashion. All of these things have nothing to do with God. Those are self-centered things. But if you center yourself and you realize that God has put this there, not the devil, because the devil is dead. Again, the devil is dead. Spell the devil backwards. Spell devil backwards. You have lived, lived. And you know, and I know, we serve a living God who speaks the living word and we were made in that image and in that likeness. And when God spoke, we were here. That is what it is. So if we let go of these problems, if we let go of these people that can be a problem in our life, then we have just made some sort of advancement 
to the kingdom of God. There are many people who have been in your life for 20 years. There are many people who have been in your life for two months. And they should not be in your life at all. They should be away from you. Because they are not serving the will or the purpose that God has put before them. And it is not your place to force someone. Again, that goes back to trying to press the issue, trying to negotiate what you want out of a situation or someone. We must understand that we will go to heaven as individuals. We will not be collectively there. You will go and you will speak to God. I will go and I will speak to God because God has that much time to deal with us as individuals. But here on this earth, we don't have that much time. So we think. But if we are vessels of God and we allow God to control the time within our days, within our lives, then we serve on God's time, not the time that we have on this plane called earth. That's the catch. We must understand who we serve. We must understand if we serve God, we give to God. We give it to God. And that is very crucial to understand if you are serving God, you give it to God. God created all these problems that we have here on earth. I get angry. I get frustrated. I get mad. I get all the same emotions you get. You get all the same emotions I get because we are human. We are inhaling. We are exhaling. We are blinking our eyes. We are formulating thoughts and we are speaking these thoughts. If God has given us the capacity to think Clearly, if God has given us the capacity to expand and contract our lungs, if God has given us the capacity to use our vocal cords and to use our tongue to vibrate these words outwards into the world, then you should be doing so. All of these things are very vital. But how often do you think about you never have to ask God to breathe in and breathe out. You don't have to ask God to blink your eyes for you. There are certain things that you have never had to ask God to do. They are innate. That is the gift of life. And maybe you should thank God because you are able to inhale and exhale, expand and contract your lungs without having to be on a ventilator, without having to be on life support without having to have a CPAP or a BiPAP. You should praise God for these simplicity, the simplicity of these things. But it's not simple. Ask any medical doctor, a pulmonologist, a neurologist, ask them, an ophthalmologist, ask them the complexity of which your eyes, your lungs, your brain, Ask a cardiologist about the heart and they will break the body down to you and they will tell you how complex God made us. So the situations that you are dealing with are nothing to the complexity of you as a human being. Understand that and believe that you can do all things through Jesus Christ the Nazarene that has given us the strength to do these things. But are we actually exercising our spiritual rights to let go of the worldly things. Now, we think about what Jesus has said. Many, many things. Some things aren't even in the Bible. You must go and find these words for yourself. But if we focus on what Jesus did say in the Bible, he has told people, that you must sell your things, give away, sell your goods, give away everything and follow me. But how many people on this earth are willing to give away everything and go where God said, I need you? I do know people who have done these things. You maybe even know people who have done these things. So I'm asking you. To dig deep and let go of the problems and give them to God. It's all about supporting each other. That's what it's about here on this planet Earth, God's waiting room. 
We are all waiting for God. And every single person that is on, on this planet is living in the last days. Why are we living in the last days? Because our days are numbered. And then when the next generation comes upon this earth, they too will be living in the last days. The generations that came before us lived and they are not here. And our time will come too. It is up to us to support each other. To help each other gain that spiritual capacity, to gain that spiritual endowment, to know that we need to get it right here on this earth as it is in heaven. We talk about our ancestors. We speak about our ancestors all the time. Talk about how we want to carry on the legacy. That's not a legacy. A legacy has to deal with the individual. That is a lineage. Know the difference between a legacy and a lineage. Most people say, I want to leave a legacy. Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, left a lineage. I will follow the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. And I, too, shall leave that lineage for the future generations to walk this earth. You must understand that one day you will be an ancestor. You will be an ancestor one day. So when they go back, when the day comes and the future is here, when they go back and they look at the year 2024, the year 2018, the year 1999, what will they think about you? What will they think about you? What type of lineage are you leaving for God? Are you leaving a lineage that is filled with anger, frustration, and ways of this world because the generation that will come to this world will know and learn the ways of this world. We need to teach them the ways of God. This is what we need to do. The ways of God. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Everyone, including the old serpent, the devil. You have more power than the devil. You have more power than any demon, than any negative person walking this planet. It is within you because you were made in the image, in the likeness of God. And also, God did say, let us make them in our image and likeness. So we were made in the image and the likeness of God, which is the spirit, too. And Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. Jesus was in the Old Testament. Go through the book of Ezekiel and study it. And then go through other books and study and learn who they were talking to. Who were in those visions and in those dreams. Who really was in that fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Think on these things. Jesus has never left us. God has never left us. The Holy Spirit has never left us. That Trinitarian has been with us because we were made in their image and in their likeness. Again, God said, let us make them in our image and in our likeness. The Holy Spirit moved across the waters. This is in Genesis. So if you think that we just received the whole, those cloven tongues of fire from the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, then no. No. The Holy Spirit has been with us from the beginning. But are you willing to give God praise and acknowledge that the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, has been with us? Are you willing to do these things? Are you willing to speak boldly across these social media platforms and speak the word of God and let God use you as a vessel to where you don't have to have anything written down before you, to where it all just flows because you are God's computer. You are God's computer, the supercomputer of God, the original computer, the original internet is the human mind. Again, what would social media be without you? What would social media be without society? What would social media be without us? We are social media. 
These platforms are just that. A platform is a stage. But we, as the human race, are the stars. We are. You are. You are the star in God's eye. You are the most important person on this planet to God. Now, you need to start believing that you are the most important person walking this planet to God. Why are you not? You were made in the image and likeness of God, were you not? Yes, you were. Even if you doubt it sometimes. Yes, you were. Think on this. Jesus suffered. Jesus actually suffered more injuries than any athlete in their entire career. And Jesus suffered this in a matter of hours. In about a 9 to 12 hour window, Jesus suffered all these injuries. Let's give it 24 hours. Jesus suffered all of these injuries. All of them. From 3 a.m. to the time of his crucifixion. From the time he was caught, 3 a.m. in the Garden of Gethsemane, snitched out. That was planned. That's what people don't understand. As mad as you want to get about Judas, sidebar. As mad as people want to get at Judas, Iscariot. It was all planned. And there were two disciples named Judas. Understand. One, Iscariot. So don't get mad at Judas. Judas is an example of the people that we have in our lives. So why wouldn't Jesus have a Judas? Jesus has gone through every single thing that you are going through. Everything that you're going through, Jesus went through. And you know Jesus suffered more injuries than any athlete suffered in their career. Punctured lungs, fractured ribs, holes in his cranium, broken legs, torn ligaments, can't breathe, blood everywhere. This is what Jesus suffered, our Savior. He suffered these things. What about the mental anguish, knowing that your disciples are going to stab you in the back after they've seen you perform all these miracles? So don't get mad. Don't get too mad. You're, you're human, so you, you, you might get mad. But give it to God. Jesus got mad too, and Jesus wept. But he gave it right back to the Father. I understand that somebody may have cheated on you. But many people cheated on Jesus. And I've seen people go through relationships and survive because someone had an affair. I've seen it happen. Not just a woman staying with a man, but I've seen it all sorts of ways. God is good. Relationships can be repaired, just like our lives. So don't give up on someone because they have given up on you. Jesus didn't give up. He didn't give up on his disciples knowing that they were going to what? Rat him out. What? Turn coat. What? Fall lame. What? Punk out. What? Run away. He didn't do any of those things knowing his disciples were going to do those things. These are the things that we must endure in our lives. We have friends that just take money from us, never pay us back. We have family members that just use and abuse us. We have strangers to do the same thing. We have people on the freeway that would just make an obscene gesture just because they felt like it. We have to learn how to let these things go and give it to God. Jesus gave it to God. And Jesus suffered much more than what any human has suffered. And you know I'm speaking the living word when I say Jesus has suffered more than what any other human has suffered. He has. And 2,000 years later, I want you to think on that. We give Jesus praise for these things. Jesus is the most famous human to walk this earth. But one thing we don't really understand, and I'm going to point out to you all. When Jesus was crucified, so you can understand how confusing God can make things. When Jesus was crucified, there were two people, as you know, Barabbas and Jesus Christ the Nazareth. 
But did you know that Barabbas, his first name was Jesus? So you had Jesus, the Christ, and you had Jesus, Barabbas. God gave the world at that moment in time two choices. One named Jesus, the other named Jesus. There were two Jesus there up to be freed. If you do your research, you will know that I'm speaking the truth, but it's just that the pastors in church don't tell you this. You need to find God for yourself. You need to study the Bible for yourself. You need to study the word for yourself. You need to dig deeper than what is in the Bible as well. If you want to know God, then you must go past the books that man has assembled and dictated and removed things from. There is a book of Adam and Eve. Two books. The book of, Ad of Adam and Eve 1, the book of Adam and Eve 2. Two books. Moses has written nine books easily. Nine. Nine books was written by Moses. But only the first five. The Torah is what you can find in the Bible. The first five books. That's it. But he wrote nine to 12 potentially. The writings of John the Baptist are not all thorough. And in the Bible, you must go do your research. You must study God for yourself. God told you, and he told me, there will be hidden mysteries that shall be revealed to select people. And I'm telling you, this generation, we are the select generation. There are mysteries that are coming out now that are not in the Bible. There is more spirituality on this planet now than has ever been before. There is more spirituality walking this planet now than what it was when Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, was walking this earth. That sounds bold, doesn't it, for me to say that we are a more spiritual generation than what it was when Jesus was walking this earth. Why am I saying this? Because God told me to say this, and this is why. Jesus was here then. Jesus is not here now. We are going off of faith. Hallelujah. We are going off of the belief and what we have learned about Jesus. We have never seen Jesus. Huh? But we believe. This is what I mean by we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are anointed with the cloven tongues of fire. This is what that means. We didn't have to see Jesus in the flesh to believe. Hallelujah. You didn't need to see Jesus to believe Jesus. And the ones that saw Jesus at the time didn't even believe. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, we know it's the Messiah coming. But uh, why we, why, who, why, uh, yeah, whatever. He ain't the Messiah. He's just Jesus. We knew him when he was a kid. He's just Jesus. He ain't even athletic. He's a son of a carpenter. And that ain't even his son. That's just some kid. He says it's his son. That's what people were saying about Jesus. That's not what you're saying, though. Hmm. You're a believer. Now get to know God. Get to know Jesus. Don't just believe in Jesus. Don't just believe in God. Don't just believe in the Holy Spirit. Get to know them. Get to know that Trinitarian. Get to know. Because that's what it all comes down to and when you get to know god you will let all things go you're gonna let it all go when you get to know god you're not gonna hold on to that no more you're gonna let it all go because you know god is on your side you know you are doing the work and the will and the method and the strategy of god and that's what it's all about and that will cause you to let the mayhem go, to let the bedlam go, to let the sensational mess go. Because God has much more for you. Yes, you go through the struggle you're going now. You're going through that struggle now you're going through. I understand. You're speaking to someone that has a fully disabled son that can't walk, talk, sit, stand, or crawl.
and he's 15 and we've been changing diapers for 15 years. So there is no mother that has changed more diapers than I have changed. Unless you've been changing diapers for 15 years every single day, 365 days within a year and multiple times, I change more diapers than you have changed in your life. I mean, two diaper changes a day is 720 for a year. And you think I'm just changing my son's diaper two times a day? My wife is just changing this diaper two times a day. And eh, eh, he ain't allowing that to happen. Nope. So his diaper gets changed. I don't know how many times a day. A lot. A lot. So you have to understand. There's always somebody who has more than you in their life. But my situations do not outweigh your situations. My problems don't outweigh your problems. God has given us exactly what we need to keep us rooted to God. Now, it's up to us to be aware of that. It's up to us to be able to see this. It's up to us to be pillars in our community. Women, men, I don't give mm, what your ethnicity is. You need to be a pillar in the community in which you reside. It's not all about trying to reach the entire globe. If you want to reach the entire globe, reach somebody in your community, and then they can reach someone else, and then they can reach someone else. It's the butterfly effect. It's the ripple effect. It's the wave effect. Whatever you want to call it, it's about being fruitful and multiplying. That's what it's all about, being fruitful and multiplying and letting go of the trash, letting go of the mess that's in your life, letting go of all the drama, letting those people who get on your nerves go. If they're getting on your nerves, let them go. You don't need them in your life. Learn. I told somebody the other day, I saw, I'm out somewhere, and they had over 264 Text messages on their phone, over 500 mixed, no, what's about 469 missed calls. I was like, what is this? What is that? Oh, they didn't want nothing. They don't want nothing. I'm like, well, why don't you just block that person? Well, you know, I just, you know, I don't mind. I'm like, well, you have over three, almost 300 text messages, four, 400 plus missed calls. And this is all from one person. That means you should probably block that individual. That means you need to get that person out of your life. Because I'm quick to block somebody. Social media, I'm quick to block you. In real life, I'm quick to block you. I don't have time for the games. I don't have time for the trash. I don't have time for the mess. My mind is stayed on Jesus. My mind is stayed on serving the Lord. My mind is stayed in being relentlessly relentless in my pursuit of the kingdom of God. And your mind should be that way too. So if you're not focused, if you're not trying to learn, if you're not trying to grow or enhance the next person, don't be surprised if eventually you get blocked. Now, if you are the other person that I speak of, that is doing everything they can and being diligent towards God. Go ahead and block that person. Because by the time I was done talking to that young lady, she said, you know what, sir? I don't know why she called me sir. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not that old. But anyway, <laughs> uh, she said, uh, you know what, sir? You're right. I think I'm going to go ahead and block him. I think I'm going to enjoy blocking them too. She was like, will they know if I blocked them? I said, sure, they're going to know. It's going to say message failed. I said, I don't care if they see message failed. I want them to see that their message failed. Your attempt to disrupt my life has failed. Failed. And that's what you want. All those people who are attempting to disrupt what God has given to you, they'll fail. Because there is nothing, nothing that can tear you apart from God. Not even yourself. When God has put something in your heart, there ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't even take it out your heart. A heart surgeon couldn't take it out your heart. When God leaves a stain in your brain, I don't care how much bleach you put in it, it's not coming out of your brain. That stain God put in your brain is going to be there until you do what God asks you to do. And don't be surprised if that stain becomes uh, a multiplicity of colors. And next thing you know, you find yourself doing more and more and more and more and more and more of what God asks you to do. That's what it's about. You'll worry less about the next person. You'll worry less about them. You'll worry less. 
Because God has so much more in store for you. If you let go of all the drama and the problems in your life and enjoy yourself and give God praise, you will be fine. I promise you, you will be fine if you're willing to give God praise, if you're willing to find God for your own self and not just sit there and listen to the pastor, but study what the pastor is saying and then pray on what the pastor is saying and then converse with God about what the pastor was saying. And God will guide you directly where you need to be. If you're like me and you don't go to church at all, because I don't go to church. I don't go to church. I have a fully disabled son. He's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week care. So my wife and I can't go to church. We've tried to go to church. When we do go to church, we get stares. People say, oh, come on up here. And it's okay. No, they stare. They don't mean to stare. They don't even probably realize they're staring because one person stares, then another person stares, and someone way over there stares, and someone else stares. You got five people staring at you in five different directions. So they don't even realize that most of the congregation is taking turns staring at my wife and my son. They don't realize that. We do. We see it. We get tired of it. And then comes altar call. If anybody needs prayer, hey, come on up for altar call. If anybody needs personal prayer, at the end of the service, if anybody needs personal prayer, everybody just turn around and look at my wife and I. Like, y'all ain't finna go up there? No, because we know what God gave us. We understand more than you understand about my son. Just how you understand more about you and all of yours than what they do. So when you get those looks and when you get those stares and you know and they don't know, you just say, hey, I don't have time to deal with it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And as you see, though I don't go to church, I am right here. I'm right here. You'd be surprised how God works. Because God told me in 2020, during the global situation we all went through, when we all were isolated, I was consecrated. And God told me, he's like, Trevon, I want you to open up a Facebook account. And I already had an Instagram account. But, and I was speaking positive affirmations and doing yoga and doing everything that I could do. But God said, I want you to open up a Facebook account and I want you to start speaking my word. And I was like, God, okay, God, it's no problem. He's like, I want you to do it. That's no problem, God. If you ask me to do it, I'm going to do it. But why? I, okay. And you know, I'm not a pastor. As I tell people, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a preacher, I'm not ordained, I did not go to school for any religious studies. No clergyman has put his hands on me to bless me. I just do the, I am just a servant. I'm just a servant of God's will. I'm just a host to the Lord of hosts. But when God asks you to do something, you'll be surprised in which direction it takes you. You'll be surprised. Are you bold enough to do what God asks you to do? Do you care less about what your family has to say about what you post? Do you care less about what your friends have to say about what you post? Do you care less about anybody you know in the past, what they have to say about what you post? Do you, do you care? I don't care what anyone has to say about what I post because it's not me posting it. I am a vessel. God is utilizing me, and then I hit that button. But God's the one doing this. I was made in the image and likeness of God, and so were you. Allow God to use you. It's okay. I don't care if people think you're crazy or weird. I get called weird all the time because people don't know what the definition of the word weird means. If you take the time and you look up the word weird, you will see it means supernatural. That's why I've never had any difficulties with people calling me weird because I serve a supernatural God. And therefore, what is inside of me is supernatural. Same with you. So don't get frustrated when people throw all sorts of names at you or whatever they say learn how to let it go learn how to be a pillar in your community learn how to stay calm learn how to stay patient learn how to not be so boastful when you do do a good deed when you do something right give god all the acclamation and accreditation everything that is needed because god loves all of us and I love you as God loves you. And this is so serious. I mean, it's so serious. We have to be that generation. Again, we will become ancestors one day. 
and there will be a future generation to walk this earth. This is so true. You know I'm speaking the truth. We will become ancestors. We won't be here. What type of lineage are we leaving for the generation a hundred years from now? Do we not think that the ancestors we have here on this earth didn't think about us a hundred years from now? I would like to believe that my ancestors did think about me. Because I think about the future. I think about What's going to be here on this earth 100 years from now? Who is going to be here 200 years from now, 300 years from now? What have I done? Have I done something for God to where these people 300 years from now will become closer to God? Because that's what Jesus is asking us to do. It's 2,000 years and you're telling me we cannot understand that Jesus needs us to step up? Jesus said it. We shall go about and do greater works than what Jesus has done and the disciples. Jesus said this because he's going to be with his father. Jesus was speaking to us. Us. Not just our ancestors. You will be an ancestor one day. And what are you doing to help your future lineage that will walk this earth? I don't care if you don't have children. It has nothing to do with a bloodline, a parental bloodline. No. This is a spiritual thing. This is the blood of Jesus thing. This is the Holy Spirit thing. This is a thing of God. This is what I speak of. Nothing to do with this world. I don't care about fraternities. I don't care about sororities. I don't care about gangs. I don't care about church congregations. I don't care about the Congress. I don't care about what country you're from. All I care about is that you are human and you were made in the image and in the likeness of God, of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit that wants us to do the right thing. That is what matters. That's all that matters to God because again, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is king, that God is all, everybody. Everybody that served the serpent is confessing and they are bowing and they are on their knees. Everyone who served God is confessing and they are bowing and they are on their knees. Everyone wants to talk about rapture, 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 rapture. You show me in Revelations where the word rapture is. Don't you understand what the word revelation means? I-O-N is the suffix. I-O-N. First, let's start there. I-O-N means motion, continuous motion. So we have a revealing. I-N-G means motion. So we are reveal. we have a revealing. We've revealed something. That's what revelation means. It is the revealing, the unfolding, the showing. All revelation means is to learn, to show, to see. But you keep using as a whole. Why do we do that? Rapture. Oh, rapture, 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 rapture. But rapture is not in Revelations. I did a full audio book on Revelations. Posted it, I think, over here on Facebook. I know I posted a full audio book on YouTube that I read. Revelations, the full audio book. It could be here on Facebook. I cannot remember. But I know I did it on YouTube. So you tell me where the word rapture is. I didn't ask for any inferences, but that word is not there. So stop using it. Stop using it as, oh, there's going to be a rapture. God never said that. Jesus never said that. Plagues, yes. Famine, drought, yes. Rapture, no. Mm -hmm. So stop speaking out of ignorance. Speak out of what you've learned. Speak out of what you know. It is very important to understand the etymology of these words. You know, as people, we have to really understand what words mean. People see the word Negroid, Caucasian, and they don't understand that has to deal with the anatomy. There are white people who are Negroids. 
there are black people who are Caucasians. Do your research and understand that has to deal with the anatomy, the bone structure. That has nothing to do with the tonality of this skin. It is the bone structure. But that's what they teach us. And we live off of ignorance. That's almost like saying, oh, man came from a monkey, an ape. An orangutan, a gorilla, or whatever they told us man came from. Man was made in the image and the likeness of God. But when you separate church or God from state, that's where the problem lies. That's where the problem lies. Science, the word science, is a two-part word. Side, two no. Science means to know. Science means the definition of science, the etymology, the etymology of the word science. Science means to know. So science can only tell you what they know to believe. Just like a doctor. Understand etymology. Diagnosis. That word is a two-part word. That is actually two words put together. Dia and gnosis. Dia, charted, graft, put together. Gnosis, knowledge. Piece together knowledge. All the doctor can give us is the diagnosis. Piece together knowledge. Knowledge that they have that is broken. But God can give us the pro, the positive knowledge. Mm. This is why we serve God and not man. Because God can give us the pro. And once you let it go and give it to G-O-D, you will get everything you need to know. You heard what I said. Give it to God. And you get the pro. And you get everything you need to know. Just let it go. Let all the drama, let all the angst, let all the anxiety go. I don't care if you have to cry. Jesus will. I don't care if you have to get a little anger out. Jesus tore up the temple. I can't judge you. I won't judge you. Mm -mm. And no one should judge you. Because there is a book called the Book of Life. And they're writing down everything we're doing and what we're saying right now. Okay, so play your part. Spread the word of God. Don't hesitate to spread the word of God. Share this post if you want to share this post to spread the word of God. But I still suggest that you, as an individual, get up, get out, and spread the word of God. And let people know that God is fruitful within you. Let people know that you are multiplying the fruit of God. The word and the will, the method and the strategy all comes underneath your fold. Because you were made in that image. You were made in that likeness of God. And you understand what I'm saying. And you know it to be true. So I'm going to end right there on that note. And I'm going to let you all have a wonderful day. Be blessed. And stay phenomenal. I have many, many, many things I have to do too as well. Amen? Amen. Oh, you know what? Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. By way of the grace, the mercy, and the spiritual knowledge that the Holy Spirit has endowed us with, Father. And let us enact on that endowment that the Holy Spirit has given us. Let us utilize all of our resources that you have surrounded us with, God. Let us... Be positive. Let us spread that vibration through the word and the world, Father. Because we need that word to reach the world, Father. It is all for you. It all cycles back to you, God. And we thank you for that. You receive all praise. For we serve the Lord of hosts. And all we are a host to the Lord of hosts. And we thank you, God. Acknowledge you, God, and we thank you for allowing us to praise you because you have allowed us to praise you. And thank you for asking us first, where art thou? God, we are here. We are standing as your nation right here, one race, God's race, the human race, and we are going to spread your message all across social media. We won't equivocate from our duty that you have given to us. We will be diligent and we will be filled, Father, with rigor. So that we may be pious against all that seeks to destroy. Because we will obliterate all evil, God. For these and many other blessings, we will continuously pray in the word and blood of your darling son, Jesus' name. By way of grace, the mercy, and the power. 
that the Holy Spirit has endowed us with. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Be blessed and stay phenomenal. And remember, plan strategically for your life or your life will strategically plan for you. Amen.